Welcome! This video will guide you through the bearing replacement of the Viking Pump Hygienic Series gear pumps. This series includes the following pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information and a complete listing of suggested tools before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. It's critical to know what liquid the pump has been handling and the precautions necessary to safely handle the liquid. The pumps covered in this video are hygienic series pumps with a focus on replacing the bearings. Seal face kit, bearing kit, and elastomer kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. If the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The bearing kit includes the lock nut, inner bearing, outer bearing, cap screws, and set screws for the pump bearing. The pumps covered in this video are hygienic series pumps with standard single mechanical seals. For additional information on installing double mechanical seals and o-ring seals, see the technical service manual and our hygienic series seal installation videos. Remove the head nuts. Jack screws can be used to back the head away from the casing. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Remove the head o-ring. Using two nuts and spacers, secure the casing on opposite sides. Insert a plastic bar in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Use the retainer socket tool to unscrew the rotor retainer. Remove the rotor retainer o-ring, rotor retainer cap, and rotor retainer cap o-ring. Remove the plastic bar from the port opening. Remove the rotor. Care should be taken as the rotary member of the seal will be removed with the rotor. For mechanical seals, remove the seal stationary faces and wave springs from the seal housing. O-ring seals do not need to be removed from the casing. Reinstall the rotor onto the shaft by lining up the splines on both components. Remove the end cap of the bearing housing by removing the end cap cap screws. Insert a plastic bar in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Use a bearing lock nut wrench to turn the lock nut counterclockwise and remove the lock nut. Loosen the two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and turn the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise and remove from the bracket. Remove the outer ball bearing. Remove the rotor, nuts, and spacers from the casing and remove the casing from the bracket. Remove the shaft with bearing from the bracket. A press must be used for disassembly and installation of the inner ball bearing. Take care not to damage the spline end of the shaft. If you must press on the spline end, use a spacer to protect the spline end. Make sure the shaft is perpendicular to the face of the bearing and press the shaft through. Using a food grade lubricant on the inner race and shaft will help with the installation. Press the bearing onto the shaft until the inner race contacts the shoulder in the shaft. Lubricate the shaft with light food grade lubricant and install the shaft with bearing into the bracket from the pump end. Install the bearing housing into the bracket but do not tighten. Install the outer ball bearing into the bearing housing. This sealed for life bearing can be installed either side first and does not need to be packed with grease. With mechanical seals, before tightening the lock nut and setting the end clearance, 
The casing, rotor, and head will need to be reinstalled without the seal. Tightening the lock nut with the mechanical seal installed will damage the seal. O-ring seals, however, can be reinstalled with the rotor. Install the casing onto the bracket. Secure in place with two nuts on opposite sides of the casing. Install the rotor onto the shaft by lining up the splines on both components. Place the rotor retainer cap o-ring onto the rotor retainer cap and install onto the rotor. Apply food grade anti-seize to the rotor retainer and install the retainer to secure the rotor. Place a length of plastic bar through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Use a torque wrench to tighten the rotor retainer to the value shown in the TSM using the retainer socket tool. Place the idler onto the idler pin. Remove the plastic bar. Install the head onto the casing using the head alignment pins. Secure with the head nuts. If your pump has a mechanical seal, reassemble the casing, rotor, and head without the seal installed before tightening the lock nut and setting the end clearance. Insert the plastic bar between the rotor teeth to prevent the shaft from turning. For O-ring seals, the lock nut can be tightened while the seal is installed. Using the lock nut wrench, torque the lock nut to the appropriate value as shown in the TSM. Install the cap into the bearing housing and secure with the end cap cap screws. With the bearing housing still loose, turn the shaft while turning the bearing housing clockwise until the shaft can no longer be turned by hand. Back off counterclockwise until the rotor shaft can be turned by hand with a slight noticeable drag. This is the zero end clearance. For standard end clearance, back off the thrust bearing assembly the required length measured on the outside diameter of the bearing housing. This measurement is specified in the TSM. Mark the bearing housing and bracket, then measure and mark the bracket. Rotate the bearing housing to this mark and tighten the two set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. Check to make sure the shaft rotates freely without pickup. It is best practice to verify pump end clearance with a feeler gauge. The bearings for your Hygienic Series pump are fully installed and the end clearance is set. If the pump has a mechanical seal, the head and rotor still need to be removed to reinstall the mechanical seal. Follow the assembly procedures in the technical service manual to reassemble the rest of the pump. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you for watching.